Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. We're live at the FME here in Quebec, thanks to our friends at the SoCan Foundation with Rich O'Coin. Rich, great to see you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, uh, I was in my mind. I was telling you, I thought that we had recorded together because we've crossed paths in, uh, you know, virtually, I guess, through Pace Magazine, and I've been very aware of your career. We did that one show way back forever ago, South by 2012, I think, and in my mind, we had recorded together like six times, but I've just <laughs> been following what you do, so it's great to be here in the room together. Thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Yeah, we're about to hear three of your songs today. Two of them are from the debut record, We're All Dying to Live, and one of them is from the second record, Ephemeral, and um, what do you feel like starting out with? Uh, undead. So here we go. Thank you, Rich. This Thank is you. what is uh, what is happening in Rich O'Coin land. I mean, last time we talked, you had just uh, finished the one of the massive feats of endurance. You, was, you rode from L.A. to New York on your bicycle, I think. I did, was yeah. The, yeah. So, yeah, in uh, 2018, I was biking across America, um, writing a song, uh, writing a record uh, about like everything I was observing uh, while going across your country. 
and uh, kind of in a Robert Frank kind of outsider view, uh, except instead of pictures, writing little little songs. And uh, and then I had um, a bunch of vocalists. It's a uh, it's like my most vocal heavy record that I ever uh, made, and uh, pretty much like vocals front to back. And there's like lots of people uh, uh, singing back up in like a big vocal sound, kind of like uh, really jumping off the um, Young Americans kind of like Bowie kind of era of, of that sort of uh, harmonies and everything. And by lots of musicians, you mean literally in the neighborhood of 500 people, right? Uh, for this, for that record, it, I actually pared it down. It was my smallest crew of only, I think, 13 of us. But okay. I did sample my second record which has uh, a vocal sound that I made from recording all the audiences I played for over a summer. And what would happen is I would break the show down towards the end of the show and bring out a vocal condenser mic in the middle and uh, teach the audience how to sing this big vocal part. And uh, once I doubled and tripled and quadrupled all the different audiences I played for, I had a you know, big vocal sound that sounds like a soccer anthem of like 20,000 people sort of thing. Wow. And, and it was in that ballpark of like numbers. So, so uh, f there's a song called Reset um, that has this big uh, wordless kind of O kind of chorus. And uh, I was like, how are we going to get the sound? I was like, oh, wait, I already did the work for this. <laughs> I'm just going to resample my second record. And um, yeah, so I, I was making a really vocal heavy record and now I'm making an instrumental record, uh, and it's a uh, quadruple record, um, and is going to have more synthesizers on it uh, than any record in history. Uh, so I got to go out um, to uh, the National Music Center in Calgary, uh, where we have a very like amazing and rare. Uh, synthesizer collection and got to do an artist in residency program where I started the record and started the record with like 75 rec uh, different synthesizers including like Tonto which is this like really huge synth if you ever saw um, Phantom of the Paradise um, uh, or it's been on a lot of uh, Stevie Wonder records and um, anyway it's uh, this huge thing looks like a spaceship uh, so I got to play all these rare synths and then followed it up at the end of this last tour uh, in LA. There's the Vintage Synthesizer Museum. So I'm collecting all these and kind of what you were alluding to earlier on my first record, I had uh, over 500 guest musicians that I individually recorded on my inbox with, with one Rode condenser mic uh, and maxing out my 32 allotted uh, tracks at once that uh, Pro Tools could handle at the time. And uh, and so now I'm doing a similar thing, but because of where we're at with technology, it can be all virtual. So people are sending me their uh, synth parts, and uh, I'm going to have a probably somewhere in the ballpark of about 250 to 300 guest musicians on this record. Uh, and it's a long, I mean, it's four hours long, so it's a big one. And that is, that's the name of the synth, right, Tonto? But that's also the name of the song, isn't it? Yeah. You do a song, Tonto, and hypermodernization, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So th those are tracks leading up to the record, which will be called uh, Synthetic. And it's going to come out. I think it's also, it would be a little bonkers if I released a quadruple record in 2020, 2022. Because uh, uh, it. Uh, I started it back in 2020. But uh, uh, if I released it now... It's just so much bandwidth. There's so much stuff going on. So I was like, all right, I'm going to space this out. So essentially another LP comes out every six months for the next two years, uh, starting in October. Cool. Cool. Well, I definitely recommend everyone who's checking out this session right now, obviously continue to watch this until it finishes. But as soon as it does, go check out um, Tonto and Hypernormalization. And then yeah, you see very, pictures very of different the, on styles. Spotify. <laughs> you see the, this massive synth with yeah. like a million wires poking out everywhere. It looks awesome. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, man. Thank you. Um, there's still two more songs coming up in this session right now. What do you want to do next? Uh, I think I'll do uh, maybe it next. Don't you understand? When you give up your dream, you die.
As you can tell, most of these are sung with the entire audience, and it's a big uh, gang, messy gang vocal <laughs> instead of one guy in a basement. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, is your festival set upcoming? Is that tonight? Yeah. So there will be. When is it? We we wrap here now. We wrap together actually. So we'll walk out together. We'll come check yeah. it out. Uh, Nine o'clock. Excellent. Hours. Where? Uh, main stage. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll be there. Yeah. Um, we I saw you come come in with the Grateful Dead shirt, which is not. Um, just listening to your music and having a general sense of your vibe, I did not expect that a Grateful Dead was going to be the shirt that you walked in with. But then I was just thinking during that song while you're talking about the 
really pioneering stuff that you're doing and putting more synths than anybody has in, in history, working with 500 people, biking across the country. I mean, there's some, there's a lot of innovation and originality, which was their vibe. You know, mm -hmm. the wall of sound was massive speakers mm -hmm. and figuring out how vocal monitoring works before that was even a thing on stage. You know, yeah. is that, um, have they been a big influence for you or is that just a, a shirt? I or is that yeah. <laughs> I mean, I definitely have respected their, uh, uh, legacy and uh, I have I've had uh, a lot bigger deadhead friends that have uh, you know gotten me into their music more but I uh, certainly just love uh, I uh, this record kind of uh, was all uh, uh, built around kind of me tie-dyeing shirts for fans and stuff like that so I really got into the tie-dye and the online ceramics is a cool uh, company that that makes some pretty rad tie dyes um but yeah no i do i i, I definitely share the the uh idea that um you should always be trying to like figure out what the breaking point is and then just pull it one back or just go to the breaking point and just be like okay we just found the wall the wall sound can't get any bigger than this because literally speakers will fall off the stage yeah, <laughs> and yeah. stuff like that so i'm um, Every record, I try and do something that um, I haven't seen on another record that um, I'm trying to fill that gap, of what I would like to see if I was, you know, um, the, the listener or the consumer of the music, which I am, I think you're making art for yourself first and foremost always as well. Um, but yeah, like all the records, um, I'm a big, uh, like Dark Side of the Moon's my favorite record and I'm a big uh, Pink Floyd fan, and when I saw uh, at a midnight screening uh, Pink Floyd uh, synced up to The Wizard of Oz, yep. uh, that kind of changed my life. So all all my records are like um, film scores because I uh, I take like a uh, existing media and then I I write the songs and the the themes and everything to fit the the movie that I'm syncing up. So the first EP was um, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And then I got a cease and desist from Dr. Seuss Enterprises <laughs> LP. <laughs> and so then the wow. second record, I tried to do something in the public domain. Because the first record was just going to be called Public Publication. But then it just ballooned once I got invited like 500 people on. And I was like, I can't fit this into an EP anymore. So, uh, so that one was made from 35 movies that I cut together in the public domain, which you can still see on Vimeo. And then the third record I did to... Uh, um, or sorry, the th is the second full length, uh, Ephemeral sinks to Le Petit Prince, and it's like the 1979 Will Vinton like amazing clay animation one. He's the dude that did all the like California raisins and stuff like that in yeah. the 70s, and and then and then I did uh, Alice in Wonderland for release, and then United States was the first record that doesn't sink to something because I was sinking it. I was mostly writing it on the bicycle and like pulling over on the side of the the like single lane highways and just you know singing into my phone voice memos so like the whole record's demoed in voice memo form uh and each song was kind of written in each state that i biked through uh and then the new record doesn't sync to something either because it's uh just way too sprawling <laughs> and, and too weird to unify it all together it's more of a collection of all my favorite kind of synthesizer music I feel like United States, I mean, even if though it doesn't sync to a movie, you could be said that it syncs to the country. Like if you decide to listen yeah. to it on repeat and drive a similar route, then it, it syncs yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, that was the kind of like uh, uh, idea that it would, it would just sync to the country. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Well, thank you again yeah. for coming here and doing this. And uh, there's still one more song coming up. Uh, what do you feel like doing third today? Uh, I think the um, third one's called uh, Want to Believe, uh, my ode to Mulder and Scully. And uh, it also dips into four more years, which isn't a political song, but my friends and I would shout it to one another kind of as a joke and kind of to confuse people, <laughs> thinking that we were some, uh, this is like back in the, uh, uh, like Obama going for four more years in two 2008. And uh, uh, we, um, uh, we would just kind of shout it a apolitically to one another and then and then it got me thinking about how like our lives are divided into these four year chunks of high school and university and the years after when you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your life and and you kind of intersect with friends for 
four years and then now that I've been through that process so many times and seen friends come in and out of my life, I uh, it's like you're grabbing your friend and yelling it to them with a bit of spit in your face saying, I hope we have four more years together. So here we go. Happy FME to you. Thank you for coming and doing this. Yeah, and uh, that's a wrap on day four for us. And um, we will come hang out and watch some music, man. Thank you. Yeah, sweet. All Thank right. So see you guys next time. See you next time. All right.